I'm Shay, and my concert threshold is at an all-time high right now. Ready? Rollin'. That all-time high bit is a stupid little joke because I'm going to see all-time low tonight. I'm not that funny. I do my best. But it is kind of true because I am seeing so many concerts in such a short amount of time that my threshold kind of is at an all-time high right now. I don't think I've ever seen this many concerts in this short a span of time. At least not shows that I've attended, not just worked. Because I've worked a bunch of shows in a row, but never been to a bunch of shows in a row. Anyway, I'm not ready to leave quite yet, but I wanted to go ahead and make this intro because I am very excited. I'm going to try and keep it short and brief. Tonight, I'm going to see All Time Low at the Ryman in Nashville, and I'm very, very, very excited for several reasons. Number one, it's a concert. Number two, because it's my first time ever seeing All Time Low in concert, even though I have been listening to them since I was a little middle school emo, and now I am a post-college retired emo. I still have just never seen them in concert. I'm glad to be able to rectify that tonight, and I'm even more glad that it's going to be a special acoustic kind of show at the Ryman. As soon as this show was announced and I was like, oh my god, it's gonna be at the Ryman, that's gonna be an amazing show. Not only that, but it's gonna be an acoustic-like show. Sick. I knew not only would the show be special in and of itself, but what a cool way to see All Time Low for the first time as well. I think Mayday Parade is opening for them along with, I think they said a few other guests I don't remember off the top of my head because I have the memory span of a dying mushroom. I'm pretty sure though it said Mayday Parade and a few other special guests. Considering how many metal, rock, emo, all that scene kind of people live in Nashville now, it could be freaking anybody. Literally, it could be anybody. If you don't know what the Ryman is, it is this gorgeous old church slash concert venue in Nashville, Tennessee. It is steeped in music history, mostly country music, but music throughout the years. It's a legendary place, a legendary venue. It's basically musical holy ground in Nashville. It and the Opry. It's kind of a shame that I've never toured it, but I think it's kind of like the case with anyone who lives close to a historic landmark. You don't really feel the need to visit it because it's right there. It's like I can go at any time. I just haven't. I've been by there plenty of times, but never actually been in there. This will be my first time going into the Ryman. Lots of firsts tonight. Now, being as it is the Ryman, I decided to dress up a little rather than just my typical, you know, band t-shirt, all black audio engineer kind of get up. And by dress up, I mean a crocodile button-up shirt. This is as fancy as I get, baby. This is my Sunday best. Besides this, I'm just gonna wear some black skinny jeans and my black tennis shoes. Listen, you can curb and tamper the emo audio engineer a little bit, but you can't take it all away from me, okay? Any hoodle doodle, I'm about to get ready to go. I gotta drive to Nashville and find a place to park, and I'll catch up with y'all then. Hi, I'm here. I parked because I have a secret parking spot in Nashville. Or at least, I shouldn't say spot. I have a secret parking kind of place in Nashville that, no, I will not tell you about. But I park here, and then I take an Uber to wherever I'm going. I also forgot to give a disclaimer earlier that filming is prohibited of performances in the Ryman, but if All Time Low obviously says it's okay, or if there's like express permission given, then I will film some parts, and I'll film in between songs as much as I can. But I just realized that I should have given that disclaimer. You're not supposed to film performances inside the Ryman unless express permission is given, and I don't want to take a chance on getting thrown out. I really don't want that. So I apologize that there's a lot less concert footage in this actual vlog. However, that does mean that I'm going to keep everything else relatively shorter in general. That way it's not just mostly a vlog and a little bit of concert. But yeah, I felt it wasn't fair to make a concert vlog and not let y'all guys in on that there may not be that much concert footage. But I will try my best. Right now, I'm going to eat an early dinner, which is a peanut butter sandwich. I also brought a protein snack for after I get out of the show in case I'm feeling a little bit woozy, a little bit tired. But a peanut butter sandwich is gonna be enough to tide me over, and it's not like I'm gonna be moshing or anything, so it should be good enough. But yeah, just gonna sit here, chill for a little bit, and then head over. See y'all either during or after.
with them was back in 2007. It's been a long time. But it's a pleasure. I appreciate those guys having us out. It's freaking me out that you're not freaking 
ready? Hands up! I woke up in a stranger's bed With pins and needles in my head I couldn't have said it better. Well done. They were all like, everybody. Yesterday at rehearsal, they were like, yo, we're all gonna stand. And I was like, well, that's your decision. That's your journey. I've been standing for like 20 years on stage. I was like, I'm gonna take this moment to sit down and drink my wine and have a good time. How's it feel? I mean, never leave. <laughs> is this it now? This is it, man. Rest it tour, you're just on a stool. I love that for I you. I kinda like it. That's fair. Also, I feel like Ryan, this is what Ryan feels like, man. Ryan! He sits back there, he doesn't have to do anything. He barely does anything back there. Alright, You should start standing. That could be cool. This is wild. This is a different thing for us. Ryan has been... Ryan has been pitching us on the idea of doing like a theater tour and all vibed out like this for like five to twenty years. We're just like, nah, man, it's gotta be loud and fast. But this is cool. Thank you all for being here. This this sold out a day. Even the scalpers were like, uh, I don't know. I couldn't keep up. So thanks for uh, filling this place up. They were too busy buying Taylor tickets. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I'm so scared of this piano. So scared. I keep losing the key. It's true, it is C. Okay, I got it now. Just got jumped in the night. Life's too short, I get to fight with a bouncer at a bar in the valley. Got a couple bruises and a bite mark on my lip. I'm kissing vampires. Let's find a farm, let's get a bottom. It's a start if there's a spark, light up this icy heart. Kiss me like there's no tomorrow I wanna have your babies, let's move to Toronto Let's fall off the face of the earth We're all bound to die, but hey baby try So tell me I'm alive Tell me that it's all alright Tell me I'm alive And bring me back That is fair. Real talk. Coffee cup. Nothing like wine in a coffee cup. That's not a f***ing country lyric. I've never heard a country lyric. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this is f***ing me up emotionally. Hey Alex. 
Yeah, this is a great opportunity to shout out Aaron Bagby right now. So Aaron, okay. Aaron is very hot, first of all. He's a very good looking dude. Aaron came on board with us not that long ago and has been Jack's guitar tech for a while now. And then when we decided to plan this show, he's like, I'm playing a little lap steel. And we were like, I just, I dabble. I dabble. And we were like, Hmm. That could add something. And this dude has never jammed with us before, just came in blind. Was sending us videos being like, well, I, could, you, I could do this on a song, I could do this on a song. And then we all got in a room. And holy dude. Woo! Well done. Can you give us a little flavor real quick so they can hear us? Just a little flavor. Woo! 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 So nice. Beautiful. Uh. <laughs> it's all you got. It's an absolute pleasure to have you up here, man. Thanks for being here. You know, this is this is the first night. This is the first night of our tour. We're not we're not really doing any more like this on this tour. This this was kind of a one time. But we we decided to kick things off here in Nashville, which is where we always rehearse. Our we live all over the country at this point. And so like it's kind of a celebration every time we get back together to get ready for a tour. And we get to come we get to come here and we just you know, we practice, we, we jam for a little bit and we dial things in, and we thought this time, let's do something really different. Let's do something that this band probably wouldn't be expected to do. Because again, like, this place, by some of the absolute highest talents that the world has ever seen. And I have to say, personally, I don't feel worthy to be here playing tonight. I know, I know, let me, let me... Thank you, it's so sweet that you would say that, but you're wrong. I'm not. I feel like, I feel like this band has spent 20 years tricking people <laughs> into believing that we're a halfway decent band that you guys should put your time and energy into. And it means the absolute f***ing world to all of us that you guys come and sing along at iconic places such as this. And so this place every day. So thank you to all of you for being here tonight. And thank you for making a dream of all of ours come true because this place is bucket list. Bucket. That made 19 year old me very, very happy. My ship went down in the sea of sound. When I woke up alone, I had everything. Give me air of peace. Sing about I'm a walking So many, so obviously Alex talked about it. There's so many shows on this tour that are fucking crazy. Like we're doing Red Rocks in a couple days, we're doing all these cool shows. But this is a night I'll never forget. It's fucking cool. We've never done anything like this before. It's our bucket list tour. I'm happy my brother's here so he can tell my parents that I'm like, hey, Jack has a real job, man. He's doing it. <laughs> Will they believe it? Will they finally believe it? No. <laughs> it goes on. It was 
I've been asking for briefcases on stage filled with unmarked bills so I can do sketchy and buy weird things. And finally, we have sketchy suitcases with weird unmarked bills. So 20 years. We're gonna go buy some weird tonight. I'm talking like I'm gonna buy a rhino and I'm gonna ride it around town. Is that a thing you can purchase here? With, with unmarked bills, you can do whatever you want. I'm more just thinking about, like, where's the rhino, though? Do you guys have a good rhino farm around here? I love when people are saying yes. I'm gonna buy that. And you know how all those people drive around town doing the singing and all that? I'm gonna do one with just nacho cheese. I'm gonna sit in it. I'm gonna just pour nacho cheese all over this town. Thank you so much for having us tonight. It is unusual for bands that start out on the Warp Tour. Shows like this in such an iconic place. From the Warp Tour to the Rhyme, baby. The fact that this thing, this this band that we started in a in a basement. <laughs> Wait, is that Ryan? Is that your parents up there? Uh -huh. So in their basement, where are they? Oh, they're right there. This band would not be a band if it were not for his tenacity to steal all of us from our other bands in a group. <laughs> like, you're the best drummer. You're the best drummer. You're the best drummer. You're the best singer. You're the best bass player. Can I get you guys over my house for this one day? On AOL Instant Messenger. To my left. We didn't have a bass player, and Zach came over. We met him through a mutual friend. He went to a different high school, so we were like, F*** that dude. <laughs> but then he came to band practice and was the coolest one of all of us. And we were like, you know what, that dude's pretty cool, actually. And 
he has been writing the best riffs in pop punk music that I've ever heard since. True. It's true. On the drums. Riot has been the lifeblood and the glue and the f***ing border of this band ever since we started. He's the one that diffuses the tension when me and Jack bicker. He's the one that tells us everything's gonna be alright when it's not going so well. And it's ironic, like I'm, I'm not making this up, but like the drummer they always say is the backbone of the band. That drummer right there is the spine. Mr. Dan Swank. We met Dan. Let's go. Let's go. We met Dan some years ago, and we were we were between. Uh, we just refer to a ox, an ox musician, and ox, like, I don't know. What the we needed, we needed some help on stage. We needed filling out. The sound needed rounding out, you know? And uh, Dan and Ryan worked together in a studio, and Ryan from the very get-go said, this kid is so much more talented than we are. And so we, we, we removed him from his life as he knew it, like a claw machine, and we placed him into ours. And he's been making us sound so much better ever since. My name's Alex. I'm just really happy to be here. Oh, and one, one other thing I need to say in, a, in, in the loudest voice, but I'm gonna say it quietly so as not to yell. But just imagine that I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. Our crew put this look, this show, this vibe, this whole thing together in the shortest amount of time that anyone has ever put together a secondary show when we're already trying to return. So please make some noise at the top of your lungs. Make the walls shake. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's close it out, boys. I just ordered myself an Uber Lux Black, well, Lyft Lux Black, because it was only $5 more, and I feel like treating myself tonight. Like I said, tonight's the night for a lot of firsts. So, treating myself. Just killing time, waiting for it. A bunch of people are standing out here because the tour buses are out here. If I see them, I see them. If I don't, okay. I didn't get it on film, but Alex started dancing to uh, Whitney Houston's I Wanna Dance With Somebody on top of his piano, and it was a beautiful moment. It was beautiful. I'm glad that I got to experience that in my life. And also the banter, chef's kiss. Yeah, I'm just chilling. Just chilling outside the, the Ryman. In my life do be like that now. Just casually talking to myself in a crowd full of people with the Ryman. I don't even know if you're going to be able to hear any of this audio. I am so sorry in advance. I'm not even looking at the camera. I'm too busy trying to con consistently take a thumbnail.
absolutely ridiculous. Never mind. Just like most other things this week, that ended terribly because he parked at the wrong spot, said he was there, and he was in the middle of Broadway, or at least that's what it said, and no, he was not. So I went back to the venue and I ordered another lift and I was waiting on it. And as I was walking back and forth, I was talking to my partner on the phone and I was walking back down through the venue and I was about five feet, like five or six feet from like the little, they have like a parking lot next to the Ryman for staff and stuff. And this truck like pulls out in front of me. I say pulls out in front of me. It's not like he almost hit me. Like I said, I was several feet away. He was pulling out to see onto the street. Don't get the wrong idea. And the window was down and I was like, that's Ryan from all time low. I was like, that's the drummer. I like, I was this close to him as like this phone is to me almost, maybe like double this. And I was like, that's Ryan. Cool. And so he pulls out onto the street and I was like, buddy, you're going to be stuck there for like 10 minutes because it is Broadway and like no one is moving. And so like, as I walked past the truck, I, I said to my partner, I was like, hold on a second. And his window was down. And as I was walking past the truck, because I was I was going back to the steps to wait on my lift because that's where my marker was. I had just been pacing to kill time. But as I walked past the truck, I turned and I was like, great show. And he just went, thank you. And I just kept walking. But I saw him and I knew I had a chance to tell him how much I enjoyed the show. So I took it. I was going to film this the morning after, but that day I also had a show and I just kind of needed to take that day to recover. So I'm filming this now. <laughs> the day before it's supposed to go live. Honestly, this shouldn't be too long, though, because it did turn out that it was only Mayday Parade and all-time low. I don't know where I got that other surprise guest thing from. Honestly, I don't know where half the crap I come up with comes from. So, first things first, as y'all know, let's talk about the merch that I got. Now, I only got two things from the merch at this show. Of course, y'all know I had to get a tour shirt, and this is the one that I got. On the front, it's just a really nice, cool picture of the band in this really, honestly, nice orange color. And on the back, it just has all the tour dates, with, of course, Nashville being at the top since it was the opening date of the tour. And the second thing I got was this poster. I was kind of hoping they would have a date-exclusive item because this was going to be such a special show. Luckily, I was right. They had this neat little poster that, for some reason, you could only pay cash for. The rest of the items, you could pay, like, debit or whatever. But this item, you had to pay cash for it. And on a whim, I just so happened to take my wallet with me to the venue, so I had cash on me to buy it. So go Shay for the impulsive decision to bring my wallet for absolutely no reason at the time that I grabbed it, but ended up having a reason. I'm not crazy about the design on this poster. It's not my favorite, but I do like it. And more than that, I love the colors and I love that it is specific to the show that I was at. Okay, that's it for the merch. Let's talk about the actual bands, the actual performances. Mayday Parade opened for All Time Low, and I love Mayday Parade. I've only ever seen them, I think, one other time, and that was at Warp Tour. Yes, I am dating myself, but it was at Warp Tour. I think it was Warp Tour 2014, I'm pretty sure. But getting to see them again was so cool. It was just nice to feel like a little middle school emo again, but as an adult, every song they played just took me back, man. Hit me right in my feels. And this goes for both Mayday Parade and All Time Low, but it was just something so communal about getting to sing all these songs with so many other people, just at the top of all of our lungs, screaming our little emo hearts out. It's just that that's really what music's about, is that kind of community that can bring people together, that clearly brings out all these strong emotions in us at such a high level through so many different songs, through so many different lyrics, through so many different acts. It was just a beautiful thing to watch happen. But for Mayday Parade specifically, they were really tight. They had a lot of fun. They were just enjoyable to watch. I think it was a really fitting vibe to begin the evening. Just kind of set the tone for the rest of the evening in the Ryman. I think it was really fitting in a place like the Ryman. Because like I said, and this goes for both acts, Mayday Parade and All Time Low, that kind of communal feeling that was brought out with everyone as we were all screaming along and singing along together felt like church. And religions aside, a church is a place to do that, right? That's what it's meant to do. Be a gathering place for a community that shares the same kind of values, same kind of beliefs, experiences, commonalities, that sort of thing. It just felt like a very, very fitting venue, very fitting place for that kind of show that brought out that much of a community aspect with everyone. And I think Mayday Parade starting off that show was the perfect way to start off that show. It was a great way to ease us into the evening and get us comfortable, I guess, with each other. Being like, yeah, we're, we're all in this together because you know 
that we're sad, we're emo, and we're tired. Just made that up on the spot. Where's my Grammy? Okay, Mayday Parade was great. Now let's get to All Time Low. I have been watching videos of their shows for years. Just been watching them for years. I cannot tell you the level of excitement and just overall joy I felt when they finally took the stage because I've loved them for so long and I'm finally getting to see them. And already the magic from the evening had been building up and then it was just here and everyone was losing their minds and we were just all excited to keep losing our minds and be emo together. Be emo again. Be little emo, little emos again. In my deepest, deepest of hearts, I was kind of hoping they'd play Love Like War, even though I knew they probably wouldn't, and they didn't. But I still had hope, okay? Now, the one they did surprise me with, the one that I was so pleasantly surprised by, was Time Bomb. They played Time Bomb. I'll include the video if I can, but Alex was like, yeah, we're gonna play Time Bomb, but, but make it emotional. <laughs> I was like, yes. Yes, King. Let's do it. Uh, should we do emotional? Emotional? Should we do time bomb? Emotional? Time bomb the emotion version. What if we did time bomb but emotionally? What if there was a version of the song Time Bomb but emotionally? A lot of the things I said for Mayday Parade do carry over to all time low with the community aspect and everyone coming together. I think a good 40 to 50% of the show was us singing. And I don't mean like Alex just gave over the reins with the mic to the audience. He did that a lot, but I mean everyone was just singing so loud. And maybe it was because I was in the balcony that I heard it all the better. But we were being heard over the band, and they didn't seem to mind. And it felt like emo pop punk church, as much as that can feel like a church. I will say this about All Time Low, though. I do believe, at least at this point in time when I'm saying this, that the members of this band are the most comfortable with each other that I've ever seen in a band, at least a live performing band. It really felt like we were in a garage watching a bunch of friends play together in a band. That's what it felt like. It felt like we were watching a bunch of buddies get together for a show. It felt that tight-knit, that tight, that close, that easy. That's how I would describe the relationship, the vibe between all of them, the dynamic. It just felt so at ease and so comfortable and fun. Just absolutely fun. If you know anything about All Time Low, you definitely know about their banter, especially between Jack and Alex. But they all had incredible banter the entire show, and I made sure to try and get plenty of that on video, and I'm sure I'm gonna put some of it in here. I tried to respect not filming the performances as much as I could, but whoops, my finger slipped on the record button. You're welcome. But honestly, everyone around me was filming. There were so many people just with their phones out and the staff was all around and no one said anything at all. And so I'm like, okay, so is it okay? I'm guessing it's okay because at one point a staff lady was next to me and I was like, and she didn't say a word. And so I was like, Okay, and I saw staff around people all the time, like, filming with their phones. Not just taking pictures, but filming, like, full on, like, not a word. Not a word was said. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to monetize it anyway. Not that I ever would. But okay, I guess that's what we're doing. All right. But I am going to try and respect that rule as much as possible. So I'm not going to be including a lot of the clips that I filmed. I'm just going to keep them personal. And I'm going to try and buffer in more banter rather than the performances. So if you're wondering why... That's why. I tried not to film too much though because honestly I was just trying to live in the moment as cringe as that may sound because when am I ever gonna get to see All Time Low with the freaking rhyming again with Mayday Parade? I need to live in the moment. I need to just sit there and like take it in and I'm so glad that I did do that. There were some people that were just filming the entire time and don't get me wrong I pulled out my phone to take out a lot of pictures but I'm so glad that I forced myself to put it away more than I wanted to. It really was a once in a lifetime thing and I am so lucky that I was able to be there for it. That's just the main thing I have to say about the show is just how comfortable they all were with each other was so lovely to see because it felt like just a bunch of friends jamming out together and I think it just added elevated that community aspect we were all feeling because it felt like we were all best friends and had been for the past 20 years. And we kind of were because even though we may not know each other's names, we don't know where each other comes from, what we do for work, where we've been, we know that we are all singing the same song at the top of our lungs and we kind of have an idea that we felt at least similar emotions at some point in time and we can relate on just that human level. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I think that's something that's unique to art. 
and something especially powerful about music and that's why I love it and it was just beautiful to see and be a part of. And thank you to All Time Low and Mayday Parade for being a catalyst to bring it out in all of us that night. And that's really all I have to say about that. As for right now though, this is gonna be it for this concert vlog. I do have a whole playlist dedicated specifically to my concert vlogs. It's gonna be linked up in the cards so make sure to check that out. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. If you ain't heard it from anyone else today, I love you. Love and peace.